Welcome to another episode of Lawyer Up and to the Right. I'm joined today by my co-host Caesar Cobo. And today we're going to talk about some a little bit more technical SEO things, especially for law firms out there. We're going to talk about what you can do for your website after you've optimized your on page, you've done your keyword research, you've built some content, maybe built some links, and you're still not ranking. This is kind of a secret weapon that we deploy for a lot of our law firm clients where we pretty much always see good results from. Let's get into it. How are we doing, Caesar? It's been a while since recorded. How's everything going on your end? All right, it's going good. Good to be back in the saddle. Summertime here in Miami, it's a jungle outside as usual, um, but we plug along nonetheless. So today, uh, I'm gonna let you do most of the driving today. Today, we're gonna be talking about internal linking for lawyer websites. So let's just start a little bit talking about talking about why internal links are so important from an SEO point of view. Yeah. So. A lot of people, when they think about SEO, the common sentiment that's out there is backlinks are the most important thing. And I think by now everyone understands that backlinks are important. By backlinks, I mean getting links from external sources. Uh, but something that is often overlooked is, is your internal linking structure optimized? Have you done everything that you can do in-house to have to rely less on external links because the reality is getting backlinks is not something that's in your control. So being able to have a solid internal linking structure on your own website is fully within your control. And it's something that we start off every campaign analyzing. And we do that first before we even talk about backlinks. We make sure that the internal linking structure of the site that we're working on is fully optimized. So I'm going to share my screen over here. We've actually got this blog post on our website, webers.org, where it talks about, we also call them silos, right? And a silo just meaning how you're grouping your content physically on your website. So when we talk about silos, what we want to try and do is we want to try and create pockets of relevancy using content, right? So for example, if you're a PI attorney, right? You do car accident, you do dog bites, you do slip and falls. What we want to try and do is you want to try and build content around those topics. You want to start with your practice area page, which is going to be the main pillar page, silo page, whatever verbiage you want to use. But that's going to be the focal point of where you want to drive your traffic, specifically your rankings. On top of that, though, what you want to aim to do is build supporting content around that topic, right? So we're talking about DYs. If you're, uh, again, you do, you know, DY law in Miami, Florida, you want to build supporting content around that to build relevancy. So things like blood alcohol level in Florida, these are just topics off the top of my head. And you want to literally use internal links, meaning linking from that content back to those practice area pages. This might be a better graph to look at here, or maybe not. But essentially what we want to do is we want to build relevancy and we want to build silos, if you will, with content and use internal links to literally physically push that traffic and that equity back to these pages. Because the way that search engines work, is they actually crawl, right? Like picture a spider crawling from page to page through HTML links on a page, right? So this works both when Huffington Post writes an article about the 10 best law firms in Miami. If they include you in that article, the link back to your website, Google will crawl from Huffington Post back to your website. And it almost counts kind of like a vote of popularity, right? They'll say, oh, Huffington Post is talking about the best lawyers in Miami. They cited your website as a source. So therefore, you must be one of the best lawyers in Miami. It's a very rudimentary example. But then what we can also do is we can help to push that equity across your website to get more pages crawl to build more depth using internal links. And this graphic over here just kind of shows, again, how you can interlink pages and how you can build these different pockets or silos or topics around a website. Yeah, and something we've already talked about on this podcast is the concept of EEAT, which is essentially building uh, trust and authority in Google's eyes. The way that you do that, if you just have, say, a service page or you just have one page talking about a particular, let's just say, ERC, and you just have that one page, it's hard for you, for Google to look at that as you being an authority on in, in that space. Whereas if you've built a deep silo that you've covered every single angle about ERC, as an example, now you're establishing yourself as a trusted authority on that topic. So for an attorney, if you have multiple uh, practice areas, if you only have, let's say, your service landing page for 
DUI as an example, and you and you don't have anything else on your website, you don't have any long form articles, or you just don't have any supporting pages underneath that service page, it's a very low likelihood that Google is going to consider you to be an authority and a trustworthy source for DUI. So it's it's really important it's not just for for users of course you want to get users up to that uh to your main service page or your money page but from an seo perspective it's feeding the algorithm those signals that you are a trusted source that you know what you're talking about and that you produce content around that area of law that you want to be known for and that's why you know i talk to 10 to 15 law firms a week on consultations and between Google and talking heads and influencers in the space, pretty much every law firm that I talk to is aware of the need for content on their website, but they're not aware of how to build and format that content. Like in other words, it's not good enough to just put up a 300 word blog post about something that you're doing. It has to be researched. It has to be informative. It has to be helpful. It has to actually create that authority and relevancy that you just alluded to, Caesar, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. the quality of content is incredibly, incredibly important. That's actually one of the things that I see as pretty much every law firm that we audit has an issue with is they'll just hire an agency who just kind of cranks out random content to put on their blog. It doesn't really do anything, right? On the flip side of the coin, if you have no content on your website, your website content on your website, you just have your practice area pages, which I actually went through yesterday and we just signed a new client to help them build out this supporting content infrastructure because their website is just too thin. You, you're, you're talking about ranking for a search term in the defense space or the PI space that people are paying $500 per click for, right? So the level of competition and demand for those queries is astronomical. It's almost hard to picture. <laughs> uh, in a sense, you're not going to rank for those keywords organically from just having a very thin basic website. So this concept of content and the right content and the depth of content, the authority of content, and then also using internal links to really build the proper experience, both for visitors and for search engines is incredibly important. It's, it's, pretty much always overlooked. So Caesar, when we talk about doing internal linking in practice, I think in theory, internal linking is great. And I've been doing SEO for 15 years. And I think internal linking is something that it's always been on people's radar. But over the past couple of years, it's really picked up as a top priority for SEOs to do. But the execution of internal linking to me has always been a frustration point. People talk about internal linking all the time, but it's like, but great, but like, how do you do it? Because there's no tools that automate this, right? There's not like a button you can click that goes in and puts these internal links. It requires you to manually find the content, manually group the content, and then manually go into the website and create the internal link. So talk about that that process a little bit and, and how we do that for, for some of our legal clients. Yeah, uh, so there are automated tools, but none I would recommend. Uh, there, there's WordPress plugins that you can use, but it, it they just do a bad job. Uh, and you end up having to do so many manual corrections that you might as well just do it manually from the beginning. So the automation of this is something that a lot of software companies have tried and just failed at. So yeah, it's, it's very tedious. It's very time consuming. You just got to roll up your sleeves and the, the bigger your website is, the, you know, if, if you have a bunch of pages that you just created at scale without any sort of rhyme or reasoning to it obviously the cleanup is going to be a little bit more difficult but you can do you can totally do it absolutely free um, if you register your website with search console there is a, a section inside of search console where they tell you internal links um, you can the thing about it though is that it's very manual it's a you just have to basically look at one page you click that page you see all the the links that are going to it and then you know you start to to figure out uh, what makes sense and what doesn't. The better way to do it and the way that we do it is running a full crawl of the website. Uh, and there are some technicalities here where uh, link placement is very important. So you have your global links. Uh, think about your, your main level, your top level navigation, your footer. Those types of links obviously are gonna to be to your most important pages because you want users to easily be able to find those pages. Um, so that's not a problem. But uh, identifying the other areas of the website where any possible link can be placed, that's where we start to look for opportunities to capitalize on the internal linking structure. Because for example, uh, what we call contextual linking means that it's a link within the body of surrounding content. And the the, the concept there is that you're building all of these co-occurring keywords around that link, uh, what we call anchor text. And uh, that's another thing is 
when we're when we're going through this whole exercise, we're making sure that you're taking advantage of keyword rich anchor text. A lot of times I see links that are going to important pages where the anchor text is read read more or click here, you know, and here is the there's no there's nothing that Google or even users can take from that that's going to tell you what's on the other end of that link. So 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 that's the first thing is establishing where the links are coming from. Are they, you know, if a page, let's say, for example, has 50 internal links, but all 50 of those links are from your top level navigation, that isn't going to have as strong a weight as if it had, say, 10 contextual links with keyword, uh, keyword rich anchors that are coming from internal pages that have high page rank. And that's, we'll probably leave that for another discussion of what page rank is, but that's something that we also do is establish what are the most authoritative pages on your website. And then we start with those pages. It's like, how can we, how can we leverage the, the page rank that these pages have with internal links to other pages that we want to boost within the website structure? So this is obviously quite a bit of work and it's something that uh, we end up doing a lot for our clients, right? This is kind of part of our, our standard SEO process. Yeah, it's, so. it's part of the foundation because without this, uh, you're just, you know, you're, you're going to spend a lot of time and, and, and money in most cases doing stuff that isn't going to be as impactful because you're not cleaning up your current mess. If you will. Yeah, a hundred percent. And and oftentimes too, I think, you know, you could do it on your own, right? Because it's not like this is a, uh, necessarily you need a, a master's degree here to do this. It's just incredibly labor intensive. So if you need help with something like this, again, if you've kind of been through the standard SEO checklist, if you've worked with an agency and they're just not getting your results, it could be something like internal links that's holding you back. When you combine that with the lack of the right content, supporting content, and just overall authority of the website, this is something that we do for clients on a daily basis and we knock it out of the park. So if you're interested, we do something called a traffic and lead projection analysis. There's a link below to that. We can show you exactly how much organic traffic rankings and leads that your law firm should be getting from Google on a monthly basis. All you got to do is hit that link below, grab a time on my calendar, and I'll run you through it live. Anything else to add here, Caesar? No, I think we're good. Awesome. All right, man. Then I'll see you next week. All right. Take care.